So it's just me and Saku here today. Uh, we're going down to one of my favorite spots to stay for the evening. And uh, it was wet there yesterday and most of this morning. Just clearing off. I was too eager to get out, so I left. And uh, it was damp for the first part of this hike, but now the sun's breaking out. And I really love the old saying, uh, there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. But uh, to call a spade a spade, so far this summer and fall the weather's been absolutely great here in Newfoundland and the wet day was uncharacteristic for this year and most people knock the weather here but uh, I mean we do get good conditions and today me and Sack are making the best of it uh, we're gonna go down I got a lean-to that I started working on maybe uh, last week I think it was and I have still a fair bit of that to finish that's where we'll be staying tonight by the open fire uh, I'm also going to try to do a bit of hunting, some duck partridge maybe, and if I get a chance uh, before before bed or a warm morning, I might try for a rainbow trout. Uh, rainbow trouting is open till October 8th. Get out and take advantage of it uh, when you can, but uh, I'll try this evening. But the main priority is to get that lean-to finished and uh, have an enjoyable night by the fire with my old bud. So, we're glad to have you along, and so is Saku. He's gone up ahead in a bush somewhere, and uh, I just almost wound up in the pile. <laughs> That's the rain gear I had on earlier. I got it off now, uh, even though the bushes and stuff are still wet. But it's, uh, it's a pant and jacket combo, and collapses into a really small pouch. Uh, no bigger than like a grapefruit, uh, real small, packable, and uh, it's what you need if you're going to be out at this stuff uh, often. Come on, Sack. Let's go, buddy. Come on. Good boy, buddy. That's our sign of a good hardy rainfall. Uh, there's usually not half as much down here. It's wet and boggy, but uh, you can tell that we've got a nice, nice dumping of rain. Those logs are never submerged. And now they're pretty much fully under. So we're just getting in to our lean-to now. The start of the lean-to anyways, and as we were coming in we passed a gully. And not the one that we're on now, this is the one we're on. But we passed one on the way in, and just as we got to the edge of it, uh, from underneath a spruce tree on the side of the little gully, uh, a nice sized black duck came out, and it was close enough for me to get a shot but uh, didn't manage to strike him. So he flew off, uh, and we'll go back and check there later this evening or tomorrow morning, but uh, good action on the way in. It looks like Saki was going for a swim out there. Anyhow, so I got a little fire pit. I already had a fire there the other day, the first one. To keep me dry, I've got, uh, I got a beam over here and a beam right there. Well, a couple beams, because they're somewhat rotted. Uh, but it'll do. And that allowed me to put some some poles across lengthwise and that keeps me up off the ground. From there, uh, tonight for example, 
I'm not going to get that dampness and that cold from the ground and of course that's going to suck the body heat uh, right from me and Saku. But uh, with that and a combination of the bows, uh, we should be okay. All I got to do now is I got a tarp here tucked in behind. I'm going to get that tarp and uh, Saku's out there choking on lily pads or something. But uh, I'm going to get that tarp, I'm going to put it up uh, using this beam and lay some logs basically uh, coming down on a slant that should keep the tarp in place, uh, tie a few ropes and we'll be laughing so that's what we're going at now Zach! Zach! What's up bud? What are you choking on? Too bad we didn't get that duck So right now it's just after 4 o'clock and if uh, I want to be sleeping on this thing tonight, I got some work to do. Probably only got around three and a half hours till darkness, and uh, it's after clouding over again. It's going to rain later, and I want to be nice and sheltered for uh, for this evening, make this place livable. So we got work to do, or I do anyway. Sack was just going to play around, but it's time to get at her. <laughs> The original beam I had going across the front of my lean-to was a bit too short, so I had to step out and chop a new one. So this pole here is going to be my top ridge pole that's going to be uh, going straight across the front of my lean-to and you need a nice solid one for that and this will do. What I'm going to make uh, or what I've already started to make is some out of a survival shelter and this can be used in any situation if you have the number one tool, uh, an axe. So what I've got made there now is a, a nice little tripod. Gonna use this log, I'm gonna tie it in over there, and I'm gonna lash it in to the tripod. It's actually already sitting there pretty sturdy now, and I don't even got rope tied on. But uh, that's what's up next. So what I got here is just some paracord from old crappy tire. And uh, that does the trick. It's going to gauge how much I think I need. That should be enough. Get my knife. on the other side, it's okay. Now I'm going to do the other side.
net right now is pretty solid. I can almost do a chin up off it, but I don't want to wreck it. So, uh, since I got a super big tarp, I'd say it's big enough to cover my house, uh, much bigger than what I need in this tight space, I folded it in half and that's given me a perfect amount of area to, to cover my little shelter. Tarps folded in half, but I got no uh, grommets, no loops at the back end, of course, where it's folded. I'm going to use this little piece of stick. I'm going to stick, stick it in here like this, stuff it in. I'm going to wrap my rope around it, like so. Just put a couple quick knots in there, so there's something to grip onto. Like that. And now, I got a tie down point. Benefits of having the tarp double up too is I actually got uh, a little more protection, double layered. I haven't tried this out before, so we'll see how it works. Saku's upset about something. What's wrong, bud? So, I think that's enough work on the lean to. It actually took me a little more time than I expected to fold that tarp up and squeeze it into the tight space I have. So it's livable for this evening, it'll keep me dry and uh, that's the main priority when you're building a shelter like this is to keep you dry and out of the elements. So right now I'm not going to put no logs along the top like I was going to coming down uh, you know ac across the top beam. Not going to do that. What I'm going to do is gather some firewood. It's just past 5.30 That'll give me a couple hours to gather firewood, pile it up, and then maybe uh, another duck will fly in and we can see how that works out for us. Hey, Zach. And the reason why uh, I chose to use this big, jimongous tarp was because I've had it now for, geez, probably two, three years. It was sitting in the back of the truck, and to go out and buy another one for $10 or whatever, it was a waste of money. So I figured I'd use what I have. And I think that relates well to a survival situation. You uh, you use uh, whatever you have on you at that point in time. So I'm stuck with the big tarp, but it turned uh, turned out to work well for me. So after the rain yesterday, everything in the woods is absolutely soaked. But uh, have no fear. You don't need birch bark, you don't need old man's beard, uh, anything like that, newspaper that you brought from home. Uh, you can get a fire going with one thing and one thing only, a uh, match, a lighter, or a flint, and some dry dead wood. So you're looking for something like this right here, I give it a knock, I know that's hard and that's solid. What that means is I'll be able to cut that up in chunks, split it. Uh, make some little feather sticks, some thin dry shavings from the inside core of this tree which is bone dry and there should be no trouble getting the fire going. Time to go to work. Sack, heel sack, come on. Heel sack, let's go, come on. Good boy, come on, come on. Come on, buddy. Watch out now. I'm gonna chop a tree down. Come on, let's go. Up there. Come on. Good boy. As you can see, the inside of this tree, which is dead, is bone dry. And it was absolutely pouring rain yesterday, overnight, last night, and this morning. It don't matter, you're always safe. You just need some sort of saw and an axe. 
and you don't really even need the saw. You could, I could have chopped this down with the axe and still made the splits, but it's a little easier when you have a nice flat surface to slam down on with your hatchet. I'm going to show you how to do it uh, now in a minute. It's just past six o'clock now, and I got a nice mound of wood over there, and uh, got some more sticks here that need to be chopped up. I'm gonna get the fire going first though, because dark's setting in, and there's a little bit of a mist going on, so I want to be uh, warm, and I don't want to be doing this when the when the sun goes down. But I've been flat out since I got here at around four o'clock, and that's the way I love it. It's hard work out here, but it's fun. It's uh, it's enjoyable and you're always doing something but uh, to me it's it's good good fun but I'm gonna finish up now uh, get this fire going and then I'll gather a few more sticks of wood and then I'll tuck away for the evening me and all sack sacks already getting cozy aren't you sack sack you getting cozy bud yes you'll sleep up on the platform with me I promise you that Dry as a bone. Uh, it's a bit knotty, making it difficult uh, to split, but it'll do the job. As long as it's dry, you're in business. Now that I got a nice mound of splits, I'm going to turn those splits into feather sticks. Simply get a surface, sometimes I even use my boot, not overly safe, or a stick, and you're going to grip the knife like so, almost a fish grip. I'm sure you could do it any way uh, that felt comfortable for you, but I do it this way and I'm just going to choke up on my knife, bring it in close to my body and slide it down, make some strokes and you're getting thin shavings. And then these thin shavings are going to have a lot better chance to catch fire than big chunks of wood of course. So I'll make a good seven or eight of these at least. And again, you could do it on less, I think, but it all increases your chances of getting that fire going with maybe only a couple matches, depending on the situation you're in. So I don't know if you can tell or not here on the GoPro, but on this feather stick, I have much thicker, bulkier feathers. Whereas on this one, they're tinier and thinner. Uh, that's going to increase your chances of getting a flame on this one over this one here. So it's good to have some that have bigger, bigger uh, curls or feathers, we call them. But the main thing is that closer to the base of your fire, where you're going to put the flame, use the feather sticks that are thinner. Now that I got a nice bundle of feather sticks, I'm going to pile them up and leave a little space under here so I can slip the match in. That works best I find. Sometimes if you open them up a little bit too, you give some more space. That helps.
it's a bit of a puzzle sometimes getting these in here. Uh, you just slip and slide until they fit sensibly. I'm getting hungry now. What about you, Sack? He's all curled up in the ball. I haven't ate since dinner. I'm starved to death. If it's raining out, you can set the tarp up first and then split your wood and make your feather sticks underneath it. That way you got a better chance of getting the fire going. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Looks like I made a nice pile. It all caught up pretty quick. This is the difficult stage though. I'm trying to nurse it to make sure uh, everything goes as planned and it doesn't go out. I got a couple bigger splits laid to the side. I'm going to slowly slip those on. God, you can't beat that noise, can you? The crackle of the old fire. One of the best sounds on the go. Everything is super damp, so it's taking some time. Even the backs of these dry sticks is damp. And you can tell when the flames hit those parts of the wood that you get some uh, smoky, smoky creations. But it looks to be stable. The best thing to do is once you get it going like this, uh, keep feeding it splits like I said and stick around the fire for a bit. Don't leave because it can go out in a second. I'm going to start feeding in some unsplit sticks. They're thin but they're damp on the outside. Once I feel like the fire is ready to accept them, that's when I add them. What I also have done is put the fire on a little platform, if you haven't noticed. The ground's damp, uh, you don't want to put the fire on the, on the damp ground. It's going to decrease the chances again and uh, this little platform, once it catches, will give you a little base to the fire. I'm just going to take some damp logs now and lay it around uh, the base of the fire. That way they'll dry out uh, the outsides and they'll be good for later. When I cook my fresh beef soup that I made last night, I wish it was moose or something else, but uh, I was stuck with beef, so that's what's on the menu for me. And the sack's looking really hungry now, so once this gets going, we'll have supper. So. That's it for this evening. Uh, I hope you picked up a couple hints from my instruction on getting this fire going uh, after heavy rains when it's real wet. So, me and Saku made it through the night, didn't we bud? The shelter held up well, uh, it was an unbelievable little home for the evening. The rain picked up at points, but just awesome to be in a shelter and uh, even though you're still exposed to the elements, you had that little, little tarp above your head, just enough to keep you out of it. And to me that's a really cool and raw feeling. So. Uh, I'm very happy with the performance of my little hut that we called home for a night and I look forward to doing another night in this, uh, again soon. 
So we're waiting for the morning coffee to boil up here now. Um, then we're going to go on a little hike. Maybe try to hunt a couple things. And uh, maybe even cast a line for those rainbow I was talking about. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Then we'll make our way back home. But it's been great. And I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like down below. And hopefully I can catch you out for the next one. Whenever that might be. Hey, Zach. We, uh, we enjoyed your company. So we're not going home empty handed today. Uh, I went down, down to a, a pond nearby and had a couple flicks for a rainbow, uh, as I was saying. And third cast, I struck one. I thought I was going to be on absolute fire, but uh, that was it. I fished for another hour and a half, I believe and uh, not another bite but I'll take that and now we're on our way out uh, heading home thank you, thank you Let's go, buddy. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. Okay. Zach, you see? Good boy. Stay there. Good boy, Zach. Come on. Good boy.